Hello, all you beautiful people out there. I hope you have had or are having a fantastic day. If you're new around here, welcome. My name is Sam, the teenager who talks about teenage stuff because there simply isn't enough of it on the internet. It's been a while, guys, but it feels good to be back. School just kind of gone the way, you know, being the IB and stuff. Nonetheless, I hope you guys have been keeping well. And if you are new around here, I'd appreciate it so much if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. The support has been incredible even when I've been gone for a week and a half. So it's nice to see that you guys are coming back to the channel for more content. Anyways, you guys heard me mention it there. School kind of gets in the way of a lot of things sometimes. And one of those reasons is because I'm a math AI HL student. Aside from that though, one of the most frequently questions I get asked all the time is how do I pick the new maths course that I'm gonna take in the IB? So recently, um, I think maybe two or three years ago, the IB decided to split up the maths courses. So it's no longer math studies, math SL and math HL. It's now two new courses, both of which have an SL and HL option. So the first course is AA, which is analysis and approaches. This is the more typical standard sort of math. You've got an SL and a HL version. Then you've got AI, which is the new sort of math. It's the applications and interpretations, both SL and HL. And today, hopefully I'm gonna be able to answer a lot of your guys' questions about the two new math courses. Which one should you pick? What do the two courses entail? And which one is right for you? So let's get right into it. The first thing that we need to discuss today is what are the main differences between the two courses? Now I've boiled it down to three. So difficulty, the type of math, and then the content and weightage. If we begin with point number one, difficulty, in my opinion, both courses are challenging at a higher level. If you pick AI or if you pick AA, they both have their own unique sets of challenges to them. But in general, I have to admit that AA is the harder course. I know a lot of my fellow AI students probably won't like me saying that, but deep inside they know it's the truth as well. AA is the harder course, be that both at SL or HL. I've made a little inequality diagram for you guys. So in my opinion, AAHL is by far the hardest course. AIHL is the next hardest course, then it goes AASL, then AISL. So if you're concerned about difficulty, hopefully that answers your questions. Both the HL courses are challenging, but in general, A is the harder course. Point number two is the type of math that you're gonna be doing in each of the courses. So for AA, it's more of your classical, traditional style approach to mathematics. So it's what you've been doing up until now in class, if you're just coming into the IB, and it's what you probably imagine higher level mathematics to be. You know, lots of calculus, lots of new abstract concepts that you're gonna be incorporating, lots of derivations, proofs, lots of pure mathematics, lots of handwritten calculations. As we're gonna see by the two diagrams on the right hand side of my screen here, which break down what each of the courses entails, AA is more of that classical proving sort of style mathematics. But where AI comes in, it's a very atypical style of mathematics. So it deals with the applications of mathematics in the real life world. My math teacher and I have a very fun joke. We, as AI students, actually use math, whereas AA students kind of prove what's already been proved. Come at me, AA students. Anyways, aside from that, application students are gonna learn how to use math in the real life world, apply it to a lot of different situations. With the AI course, you're definitely gonna see a lot of world problems, lots of applications to real life situations, and it's gonna be intracurricular as well. So you might get economics-based questions, you might get biology-based questions, but they're going to be math oriented. Don't worry, it's not like if, as if you were taking biology, you're just gonna have a biological situation in which a type of math that you learn in AI is going to be incorporated. So it's really cool. Math will pop up a lot of different places where you might have not expected it to, but it's going to be filled with a lot of word problems. So if you're confident with word problems, maybe AI is the course for you. If you're more confident with just question and answer and complex math, long working out, then maybe AI is the right course for you. But AI is kind of known as the course with a calculator. So a lot of the questions require to use a calculator. And again, a lot of people laugh at me when I say this, but AI makes using a calculator difficult and you're, you need to experience the course to believe that statement. In terms of the assessments for AA and AI, if you decide to take HL, you have paper three in both cases. If you decide to take SL, you have paper one and two in both cases. For AA, paper one is without a calculator, paper two is with a calculator, and then paper three, if you take HL, is with a calculator. But for AI, all three papers include a calculator. Hopefully that's given you a better understanding as to the types of math that are encapsulated by these two courses. Let's have a look at the content and weightage distributions of the two courses. In terms of content and weightage, this is a neat little diagram that I found online that details the percentages of all the different topics that you're going to be covering over the two years. This does it for math AAHL and math AIHL. So you can see 
that the main differences here are that Math AIHL do a lot more calculus than Math AIHL. I definitely have started to see that, especially now that we're doing calculus in school. My friends that do AIHL, they have a lot more calculus. It goes into a lot more depth. This is the main thing. Even our head of uh, mathematics says this a lot of time. With HL and especially with AAHL, it is very rigorous and it goes into a lot of depth. That's what AA is known for and especially AAHL. Whereas with AI, I don't wanna say it's surface level, but it doesn't go into a lot of depth, especially for topics such as calculus and geometry and trig. Math AA geometry and trig is deadly. However, where AI starts to get a little bit more difficult is with stats and probabilities. You can see that 24.8% of the AI course is, compri is comprised of stats and probability, where it's only 157 for the Math AA course. Now stats, I hate it. It is very difficult and the questions can be very twisted at times. But again, it's, I say more doable than the AA course because again, for the stats and probability, you usually use a calculator for AI, but with AA, it's all handwritten. Again, we have more functions and a slightly little less number in algebra. Number in algebra, again, it's quite difficult for AA in comparison to AI. But again, the worded questions are what makes the AI course difficult. If there's one key takeaway for you guys today between the AA and AI courses, both SL and HL, the AA courses are a lot more straightforward than the types of questions that you give you, but the math is harder. Whereas in AI, the math may not be as hard, but the questions are twisted. Like with an AI question, when you look at a question, it's not uncommon for you to not know instantly what type of math you need to use, which is quite, quite the experience. Trust me on that one. Anyways, let's look at the hour distributions for each of the four courses. Now, something that's quite interesting to know about HL, if you decide to do HL math, is that you're going to have 240 hours of class time. 240 hours is a crap ton of class time, and most of the time, you're going to be learning new content. So 240 hours of new content each time you come in. It is tough. This is why Math HL is so rigorous. Now let's have a look at some key differences between the two courses, both within the course itself and in an SL and HL context and between the two courses. So if we have a look at the application section, first of all, so you can see the distribution is relatively similar. We just do a lot more geometry and trig in applications HL, but then again, we do a lot more of everything in applications SL as compared to applications SL. Now, if we compare the applications to analysis HL, for example, you can see the key differences. So we only have 41 hours of uh, calculus in applications HL, whereas there are 55 hours of calculus in analysis HL. But then again, with stats and probability, we have 52 hours, whereas analysis only has 33. So you can see some of the key differences when it comes to the topics between analysis HL and applications HL. In both cases, however, between the SL and HL variants, the SL content is always less than the HL content. And that just makes sense. If we look at the two analysis courses, some units like stats and probability don't have that much of a difference. But then again, some units like number and algebra, um, geometry and trigonometry and calculus, they have a massive difference between how many hours HL and SL does. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an understanding as to what type of content you're gonna be covering over the two years of the course, and also gives you a breakdown as to what the ratios are between the two different courses. We do the exact same topics. Both maths do it and all four courses do it. It's just a matter of how much depth they go into and how much content each one has. Now let's move on to the age old question, which one should I choose? And yet again, it boils down to university requirements and your career choice. Let's have a look at this nifty little image and go through each course one by one. So applications and interpretations SL. What course is it similar to? Well, it's similar to the old math studies. That used to be the lowest level of math. Well, that's going to be the most similar sort of feel when you go into app uh, applications and interpretations SL. Now, what type of students should take this course? Students who are not strong in math do not plan on studying math-based courses after high school. So if you're going into something like film, the arts, a humanities subject, it might be worth taking applications and interpretations SL for you. What about applications and interpretations HL? So it's unlike any other course because it really is quite unique. Which students should choose to take this course? Students who are strong in mathematics enjoy the subject but do not plan on studying math-based courses after high school. Now, I don't particularly agree with this. However, I'll bring this up a little later on in the video. Anyways, analysis and approaches. So analysis and approaches is similar to what used to be math SL. Now, who should take this? Students who are moderate in math 
maths and interested in studying courses involving maths after high school, so like economics and the sciences. Once again, don't entirely agree with this paragraph, however, it is a good reference point. I'll bring up all these points later on as well. Now, analysis and approaches HL, who should take this? It's very similar to the current maths HL course, and the strongest math students who are interested in studying courses heavily rely on maths after high school should take this course. So, any STEM related stuff, maths, engineering, physics. Now, just a second ago, I mentioned that I don't exactly agree with this applications and interpretations, which students should take this, and uh, analysis and approaches, which students should take this, because of university requirements. Although this is somewhat true, don't really take it to heart that much without checking what your university and what your course requires because every course is different. Now, over the past year, the research that I've done, this, these are the conclusions that I've come to. So, if you take Math AI HL, the students who do are usually looking to pursue a career in life sciences, economics, finance, or data science. Now, it's also worth noting if you're looking to pursue economics and finance at a school like LSC, which is one of the top economic schools in the world, you might need AAHL. But then again, that's why I put this note down here. You need to check your university requirements. I'm gonna show you a couple later on in today's video. But who should take math, AAHL? Anything that requires pure mathematics. So chemical engineering might need it, any other type of engineering, mechanical, electrical. And if you're looking to pursue a career in physics or a perf uh, pursue a career in mathematics later on as well. But again, it's all about checking your university requirements. I'll give you an example right now. I'm looking to study biochemistry in the future. I need a higher level math that I can choose between AI and AAHL. Now, without checking my university requirements, I would have absolutely no idea if that would have been the case. So good thing that I chose AIHL because that makes me eligible to take that course at university. Now, before I sign off for today's video, I've got a little bit of advice for you guys that might still be a little bit confused. Let's start with tip number one, and that is do not take math HL if you don't need it. The same logic applies with arts HL. Why would you take arts HL if you're not looking to pursue a career that's related to arts? There is no shame in taking any of the SL math courses because that's what they're intended to do. They're intended to provide a unique path for every student and make sure every student is getting the education that is tailored towards their future. So if you decide to take applications and interpretations SL, think of it this way. You're gonna bang a seven in that course and you're gonna have more time to focus on the courses you're actually interested in and will help you for university. So it's a win-win. Now, what are some of the reasons that you should not take Math HL if you do not need it? There is a very high workload. It is one of the heaviest workloads out of any IB subject for sure. It's tough, the course content is absolutely insane. For example, the AAHL kids, when I look at their math now, even though I take AIHL, my head grows to the size of melon because the AAHL content is intense. And also, check your university requirements. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna be showing you guys a couple university requirements down here. So these are the uni requirements for Oxford, that's why the point requirement is so high. Don't worry, don't panic. The typical score for music is not 38 if you're looking at any other university bar like Oxbridge and Ivy Leagues. So look at this, for example, for engineering sciences, which was one of the things that we mentioned earlier, engineering, you need 40 points, including the core points, with a 776 at HL. With sevens in HL mathematics and physics, there you go, there's that key word right there, you need a seven in HL mathematics. That should help you decide, oh hey, I need analysis and approaches, HL. Later on, if you scroll down this page, you can find this page by going to any university website, looking at courses A to Z, and then looking at admissions requirements for each of those separate courses. It's later on listed that you need analysis and approaches, HL, or applications and interpretations, HL, SL, whatever the course requirement may be. But then again, if we look at something like music, for example, it says 38, including, poor po uh, including core points, with 666 at HL. Nowhere does it say you need HL mathematics. So again, this is a really good way to find out whether or not you need to be taking either AI or AA and at what level. Number two, this is applicable to all of you guys out there. No matter what math course you take, this will help you guys study very effectively. So use a website called Revision Village. They've got a lot of practice questions, a lot of past practice papers, explanations with videos for every single practice question. And best of all, it encompasses all the math courses. So you have question banks uniquely tailored to AI, SLHL and AASLHL. It's worth noting that Revision Village is paid, but if you get yourself a premium membership, it's a one-time payment and you have it for a lifetime. Number three, this has been by far the most influential tip in helping make my math HL journey 
that much more bearable. And that is to establish a good class dynamic. So share notes with your friends in your class, study together as in class, because math becomes 10 times easier if you have friends to help you along the way. Like I look forward to going to math purely because our teacher is awesome one and the people in my class are awesome too. Because, you know, when you go to class and you have that class dynamic where everybody's open with each other, you can learn uh, effectively. Um, it just makes it a lot better. And especially when you're dealing with a course such as Mathematics HL, which is already rigorous enough, establishing a fantastic class dynamic can be the way to get you to victory. Anyway, guys, that is going to be about it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, I'd appreciate it so much if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. You guys have been crazy with the support recently. If you do still have any questions about the two math courses or about IB in general, student life, need some advice, pop it down in the comments down below. I love reading all of your guys' questions. And without further ado, I hope you had a fantastic weekend and I hope you have a fantastic week in front of you. I'll see all of you guys later.